Hi, this is Chris from the Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from Political Voices Network. Matt Gates, I, I don't even know what's happened. My, like, my head has started to... He said he's not a fan of his party's strategy for trying to impeach Joe Biden. It's just... <laughs> you can take a moment and go, what? During a private call with major GOP donors, he said he believed the impeachment inquiry launched last month was less, less about actually removing Biden from office, more about generating months' worth of damaging headlines for the presidential, uh, the president ahead of the 24 election. Yes, Matt, Matt Gates. yes. He said, I don't believe that we are endeavoring upon a legitimate impeachment of Joe Biden. They're trying to engage in like a forever war of impeachment. And like many of our forever wars, it'll drag on forever and ever and, and a bloody draw. I just don't get the sense that it's for the sake of impeachment. I think it's for the sake of having another bad thing to say about Joe Biden. Uh, he said that Jim Jordan's work on assorted Biden probes looked like failure theater. I I got through an entire article agreeing with everything Matt Gates said. <laughs> I don't know who's who well, anymore in the Republican Party. It, it sounds like Matt Gates is trying to make a play for what we just talked about. Right. Democrats coming over and picking one of the five Republicans who are willing to work and split the control um, as speaker, perhaps. Um, I don't think anybody's going to forget who Matt Gates actually is because of one or two things he said. Um, even Matt Gates's clock, uh, broken clock, is right uh, at least once right. per day. Right. I mean, millennia. yes, here's another sliver of hope. New York House Republicans uh, lawmakers plan to indu- introduce a measure to have George Santos expelled from Congress over his new criminal charges. All six of these Republicans are first term lawmakers. Um, Santos, of course, has maintained his innocence, <laughs> claimed he will continue running for reelection. He's also claimed he will not accept a plea deal. Uh, I but I just, I, where is the line in the Republican Party? So, you know, that's a sliver of hope that at least it's Republicans saying this guy is enough, right? I don't think they'll ever go for it because whoever they get as speaker um, is still going to be at the, the whim of the Freedom Caucus. And um, with Santos out until there's a special election, it would make the Freedom Caucus even strong. Those five members that, uh, you know, helped uh, oust the speaker, um, it would make them, it would make them even stronger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, they'd have one less vote to count on. Um, and they, you know, it'd be even harder for them until they get a new person in his seat. So that's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. Um, finally, I just, I'm not sure. This is the entire Republican, uh, you know, either crime grifter con man, just a mess stack uh sarah huckabee sanders <laughs> you've been paying attention to this governor sanders faces is a this new podium gate <laughs> yes podium gate faces a new and deepening questions in the so-called podium gate controversy following a new report that she tried to alter records about an invoice for nineteen thousand dollar podium she purchased with state government credit card uh sanders office has called the use of the state credit card for an accounting error as you do. Um, she, the reimbursement, though, was only arranged after reporters started asking questions. I mean, I... And it was... It, it, the reimbursement, I believe, was to somebody that she went on a trip to France with. Yes. Um, it's all it's all a little bit muddled. I think the podium took a vacation with her to the south of France. Yes. Uh, they, had a, they had a great time. Yeah, they were... It um, was on the back was, of the table. It was a little wooden. It was a little wooden <laughs> at first. Oh, and then they got comfortable. Oh. Carl, you are a delightful scamp. You are a, a, a separately a delight and a scamp, and then both together. And we appreciate you. Yeah. Mooksforcarl.com is where you go. Love you. That's right. We've only got three weeks left, so anybody can help us. Please, please, please. I'll be knocking doors all weekend. Mooksforcarl.com. We really need the support. Imagine, Down to the wire. Imagine this delight at your door. If he comes to your door, <laughs> please say, why, you delightful scamp. I'm kidding. You know, at this point, I'm convinced that Newt Gingrich was not the first Republican speaker in 50 years. He was like the ingredient of a witch's brew that cursed the <laughs> Republican speak- speakership for eternity. I mean, let's just look at the history really. I'll be very yes. quick. Newt yes. Gingrich, uh, you know, fumbled the majority, uh, had an affair with a congressional staffer during the Clinton uh, impeachment forced from office. He was going to be replaced by his buddy, Bob Livingston, who didn't even make it to the speakership because he was having an affair, too. Um, and then they gave Denny Hastert the job. Oh, dear. And he was the longest serving uh, Republican speaker in history. And he just got out of prison for, um, you know, funneling payments to some uh, students that he molested when he was a wrestling coach. And then Democrats won the majority. Yes. Right. Nancy Pelosi got a lot of stuff done. 
And then it was John Boehner, who was, you know, in the same situation that we're in now, forced from leadership because he couldn't get anything done because of the Freedom Caucus. And then Tim Ryan had the exact same experience. Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan. And then Kevin Carthy. Yes, thank you. Paul Ryan. And then, uh, and then McCarthy. And so on the Democratic side, you have Nancy Pelosi. Again, nobody will deny that she's effective. Um, and before Republicans started winning... Uh, majorities. We had 50 years, almost 50 years of uh, Democratic speakers, including people like Sam Rayburn and Tip O'Neill. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's not a bug of the Republican conference that they can't get it together. It's the feature. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I mean, it's as what someone said with Rob Reiner doing Sexy Liberal next Saturday, it is the Spinal Tap drummer <laughs> job, <laughs> the Republican Speaker of the House. Um, di- and also, as a party as a whole, Dr. Jack Brown tweets, has any Republican condemned Trump's praising of Hezbollah? Are they on the side of Hezbollah or are they afraid of Trump or both? The mainstream media must confront every single Republican official. Do not yield until you get a clear answer. Thank you. I mean, well, you know, Trump, Trump has a long history of, of uh, praising violence like this, so um, it's no surprise, and he should be made to answer for it. Um, you know, now is not the time for, you know, equivocation. Yeah. Um, yeah, Joe Biden tweeted, Our nation's support for Israel is resolute and unwavering, and the right time to praise the terrorists who seek to destroy them is never... Um, right. You know, they, he, they tweeted the uh, Biden Harris headquarters about Trump goes after Israel, says that Netanyahu let us down, needs to straighten it out before praising terrorists who attacked us as who attacked them as smart. I, I, and I said, Carl, at the beginning of the show, it's like, I guess we've just lost our ability to even almost react <laughs> to things Trump says. Right. Well, I, I don't think we've lost our ability to react to things that Trump says. Um, I think that the Republican conference it remains petrified. The you know Republican leadership in Washington remains petrified of this guy, and they will allow him to literally say and do anything he wants. Yeah, anything. Yeah, it's sick. Um. Oh, here's a fun fact from Brian Tyler Cohen. Scholars confirm acting House Speaker Patrick McHenry is not in the presidential line of succession, no. meaning the second in line of the presidency is now Democratic Senator Patty Murray. Mm-hmm. Fantastic idea. Yeah. Also, uh, Speaker Jeffries just. <laughs> He's the one with the most votes right now. I mean, I they. I'm gonna have to update my pin board when I get home. <laughs> um, it's it's very complicated. I've got lots of strings with yarn. Also, Patrick Henry, you'd have to get like a mini band to do "Hail to the Chief" because he's like this big. He's like a tiny, angry Keebler elf. It's just the whole. Okay, I seriously, but I said it last hour. Keem Jeffries has the most votes. All you need are five sane, moderate Republicans from Biden districts, right? To go, do you I'm want to at least sure, be able to govern? But, you know, if if five Republicans want to give Democrats the majority, I'm sure Democrats would be happy to split control um, with uh, those Republicans and allow them to be leaders in committees and other things and to share governance. Because there's one thing that Democrats are committed to, regardless of who's in power, a working and functioning government. Yeah, Republicans are, all, are all but saying we we can't do this. We can't govern. Help us, Democrats. I mean, it's. I love that now. I guess Jim Jordan is that's the latest reporting, right, Jody? He's making his move. Yeah, <laughs> trying to see now if he can. I I just love this. This is, here's a letter to the Columbus Dispatch. Uh, a um, uh, it, a, they are, that argued a Jordan speakership is a catastrophe for America. There is no worse human being <laughs> to have a leadership position than Jim Jordan. This is in his paper. Uh, it, they predicted Jordan's rise would mean the end of civility and finding a problem-solving path forward in the House of Representatives. The catastrophe ultimately means one of two things. Either all hope is lost or the resulting turmoil breaks the MAGA fever before it's too late. Because of our constitutional structure, structural vulnerabilities, I fear the worst. That's his hometown paper, <laughs> right? Well, you know, uh, I I would imagine if they actually chose him, the Senate Republicans would f- lose their minds because he just won't wear a jacket. And, you know, to them, <laughs> that is the most important thing ever to be discussed in Congress. Um, so, you know, look, uh, Jim Jordan is going to have his hands full just like everybody else. And, you know, when you're a backbencher or, a, you know, somebody who's not up front and center in the caucus, um, they let a lot of things slide. Um, but, uh, you know, he will be scrutinized in ways that he's never imagined if he becomes speaker. Um, and all of those stories about what he let slide will come to the forefront. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, there used to be talk of a consensus candidate like Liz Cheney, but, you know, Liz Cheney, of course, is back to her, you know, <laughs> right, her awful, like, war, you know, neocon roots. But, you know, then she'll say something, <laughs> you know, again, that we agree with. But it's just, the party as a whole, I, I think, is just lost. Like, mm-mm, there it is, my first drink of the day, Z-Biotics Pre-Alcohol Probiotic. Many of you know my my story. I stopped drinking wine for three years during COVID, during the lockdown as part of a health reset. Now I drink wine in moderation, but this is an amazing new product. I've always believed in probiotics and Z-Biotics. Check this out. You drink just one of these. It's the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. I am using this and I feel great in the morning. I don't have to worry if I have an extra glass of wine. I still feel great in the morning. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. I've always had acid reflux problems. It is this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. All I know is it works. It is Zbiotics pre-alcohol probiotic. Go to zbiotics.com/slash political voices or scan the QR code on the screen right now. <laughs> 